Good morning. I'm hoping you can see me. We're having some issues, technical difficulties. This is what happens when John goes on vacation, right? Um, actually, Brian and I are trying to figure it out and we're not smart enough or, or electronically inclined enough as John is to be able to do it. So we're gonna broadcast from my cell phone. You're not gonna have the fancy slides and that kind of stuff, but we'll get by with what we got. So let us begin with our gathering hymn, Blessed Assurance. We will listen to that. changing with our plans um, with the outbreak of COVID and how it's um, it's starting to actually hit people close to home. It, it's not so much who we know of that has it, now it's people that we know have it. Um, we are thrilled to say that Anita is out of the hospital, so she will be added to our prayer list when we get to our prayers of the people, but she um, is hopefully on the mend and recovering, and we just ask that um, you keep all of your neighbors in your thoughts and prayers right now with all that's going on with these COVID numbers in our, uh, in our area. As you know, the newsletter went out last week, so hopefully you got it last week. There's a lot of stuff going on in there, so make sure that you read through all the things that are happening. As I said, we've kind of stepped back um, for at least this Sunday and the following Sunday, we will not be in person. My guess is that it probably will go longer than those two weeks, but for now, it'll be this Sunday and next Sunday where we won't have in-person services as we kind of wait and see what happens with the numbers. Um, but there's other information in there. There's information about confirmation for those students that are in seventh through ninth grade to make sure they get a registration form in. There's information about Sunday school packets. We are going to be uh, getting some Sunday school packets out to the families that have children in Sunday school. So if you haven't been reached out to um, and want to have a packet sent out to your kids, please get a hold of the the um, church office so we can get your name on the list. Those should be going out in the next week or so. So that's exciting. And then of course we have our fundraiser that we're kick we kicked off last Sunday. Uh, here's a prime example of having technical dif difficulties. We need to get a, a, a stationary camera here at Kirkovo so that we can do um, streaming easier. Right now we're dealing with different three iPads and a phone and all that kind of stuff and it's just getting to be um, a lot to, to keep track of. And the reality is, is that we probably will be having to do this for a while and we'll honestly be streaming from now on as far as, as um, the congregations have decided that we love the fact that we're reaching out beyond Purley and Gardner community. So we need to do um, some fundraising for that. So it's called Help Our Digital Light Shine. You'll find it on GoFundMe. There's information on our Facebook page and our, our church website. But also know that if you are not a, a tech savvy person and you don't want to deal with GoFundMe, we of course, of course, of course, will always accept checks, donations sent to the church as well. Just in the subject line, put a light fund so that we know that that's what that is earmarked for so we can use it to upgrade the equipment and get things going. I think that's all of the announcements. If I think of something else, I'll add that in at the end. But I think we'll begin our service. I apologize again for the uh, not having the slides up, uh, but we'll, we'll get by with what we got. So our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. 
Open our eyes to see you and our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the doors up to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promise prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. And our prayer of the day, O God of justice and love, you illumine your, our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire to hurt me. Let those who say, aha, turn back away of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. But I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. Our first reading comes from Amos 5, verses 18 through 24. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fred, fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom, that, gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and in righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This morning, our Holy Gospel comes to us according to Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oils with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all of those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their, trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those that were ready went with him to the wedding banquet. And the door was shut, and later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I don't know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. All right, kids, a little message for you. In this past year, we have seen tons of of natural disasters. If you've seen on the news, there's, there's flooding and there's hurricanes, lots of hurricanes, right, this year? Earthquakes and tsunamis, there were tornadoes, there's tons of fires on the west coast and down south. One thing that we hear over and over and over again these days is that it's very important for us to be prepared in case of emergency. Now, think about when you were in school all the time, um, last year, and you'd hear the fire drill. And it would go off and you'd hear that beep, 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 and you knew there was a fire drill. What did, that, what did that mean to you? Well, you all knew that you had to stand up, you had to get in a line, that you all had to file out of the building and stay safe outside of the building while the firemen came and checked the building out to make sure that it was okay. And then you went back inside. Or sometimes each of the schools will have a tornado drill where they'll play a different bell. And what does that mean? Well, that sure doesn't mean go outside, does it? Because we don't want you to go outside if there was a tornado, but it means to go to a safe room inside the building where you're gonna be safe if something should happen. I remember when I was school, in school, we had to do all of those. Now think of some other things that you have to get ready for. So I was thinking sometimes, in fact, a lot of times where I live, because we have a lot of old trees, a lot of times our power goes out. So I am always prepared in, at my house, I always have a candle 
sitting in my living room, so I know that if the power goes out, I can always light my candle. Of course, you always have a flashlight, right? You keep a flashlight ready in case you need that for something. Or now as winter's coming and we get ready to start traveling, I'm sure your parents are gonna put into the car some things that you need in the car. You'll put a nice, cozy, warm blanket. Isn't this a cute one? This is one that Cheryl made that I bought for my grandson. But you'll put a cozy, warm blanket in your car. Um, you might put some snacks in there in case you should end up in a ditch or stranded somewhere that you've got some things to eat. On, eat. You put your winter boots in in case you gotta dig yourself out or you gotta slide yourself out. All of those things help you to get ready, to make sure that you're prepared. And it's important that you prepare for things like this, unexpected things that can happen. It was important at school to learn how to do the fire drills and the tornado drill, and there's a lot of things in our lives that we have to prepare for as well. So our story today talked about the same thing, about these 10 bridesmaids that were ready to go to this wedding with the groom, and some of them were prepared, and some of them were not. And Jesus said, wait a minute, don't be sleeping. Make sure that you are awake and that you are ready, and you are ready to go, and one day, when we all get to meet Jesus, we, he wants us to be, be, be prepared as well because we don't know what day that's gonna be. We don't know when Jesus is gonna come back. But the great news is, what we do know is that we can prepare and we can do it pretty simply. We can continue to be with God in our lives. We can continue to come to church and worship God. And we can invite Jesus to come into our hearts every single day. And when we do that, that makes us ready for the day when Jesus comes back and says, come with me. We're going to be with the Father in heaven. Let's say a prayer. Dear Jesus, we know one day we'll get to meet you face, and face, face to face. Help us get ready for that wonderful day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm super lucky to have my grandson stay at my house during the week for at least one night, if not more sometimes. And because of when his mom and dad need to work, I get to drive him to school two to three days a week right now. Usually, of course, it would have been many days, but for right now, I'm driving him two to three days a week when he's on campus. I forgot how wearing it is when my kids were younger to get them moving in the morning. No matter what time I get him to bed the night before, no matter how many times I ask him nicely to get up and get moving. No matter how many times I send puppy Asher in to wake him up and jump on his head in bed, it's a struggle. I am forever telling him to get ready. Hurry up, honey, we need to get going. Have you brushed your teeth, Aiden? Why don't you have your socks and shoes on yet? You get it, and you probably remember it if you don't have kids at home now. This is a great example how kids get ready, but we all have many times in our own lives as well. We have to get ready for work, we get ready for meetings, we get ready for vacations and visits. We seem to always be getting ready for something, right? Our gospel calls the early Christians to get ready, get ready for the return of Jesus. And Matthew issues that call to readers many, many times throughout his entire book, but especially in today's parable of the foolish bridesmaids. Obviously, it's been a while and Jesus is yet to come, but that doesn't mean that this lesson cannot still apply to us in our daily lives and can our continued walk in faith. The original text of this passage actually entitled this parable as the foolish virgins rather than the bridesmaids. And the reality is that I believe either of these labels, virgin or bridesmaids, was simply to help us understand and imagine that these were very young women. They were just young and foolish, not mature in their thinking, and definitely not street smart or aware of how the real world worked. When you look at some of their actions, you can't help but think that they're not laugh, not only laugh-worthy, but downright foolish indeed. Who brings a lamp but doesn't bring the oil? Who, instead of going out to buy oil, just lays down and goes to sleep? So when the bridegroom actually arrives, who rushes out to find some oil, they miss him altogether. And as Jesus told this story, he would have most likely been surrounded by laughter and giggling by those listening. Actually sounds a bit like who's on first, right? Like, why would you bring oil or lamp and not bring an oil? A mixture of foolishness, silliness, even misdirection. 
When we as Christians think about Jesus' return, okay, you can admit it. You and I don't probably think about that very often. But we, when we think about it, we most likely think about the times where we've heard in Scripture where the prophets predicted. There have been many proclamations over time of the predicted moments that Jesus will rely, rely, re, re arrive. Some as decent at the day bells. Remember the couple that the children were charged in connection with the disappearance of their and death of their children? That was just recently. And they believed that the day of Jesus' second coming was just back in July, July 22nd. If you Google the concept of the day of Jesus' coming or the rapture, the second coming of Christ, the list goes on and on and on and on. Those predicting the rapture. One wrote a book. In 1988, he called it the 88 reasons why rapture will be in 1988. And of course, when it didn't happen, he wrote his next book, 89 reasons why the rapture will happen in 1989. How many of you remember when we went through the Y2K phenomenon? How the idea that all of our technology and our computers were going to melt down and we can now laugh at those fears, just like those that have so reassuredly stated that the date will once again be when Jesus comes. However, as crazy and as silly as these people and their predictions seem to be, there's one thing that is for sure. They, at least, are thinking about Jesus' return, and they're thinking about it seriously. This parable isn't necessarily by chance, but it honestly is a bit challenging in that it's calling us as disciples to be aware, to be alert, and open to what is coming, what God's dramatic future will bring. Now you can do this in one of two ways. You may be or you may know of those that look at life perhaps because of things horribly hard, that things that they've had to deal with or are struggling with, and those people cause you to see things in a grim diagnosis or understand a negative side or a more grim side of what the day will bring. Or maybe you or others you, maybe you're the kind of people that live in a constant carpe diem matter. Seize the day. Live your life to the fullest every single moment. My youngest brother, Mike, was somewhat like that. He was killed in a car accident when he was 21. But I can honestly say it was like he knew that his life was going to be short because he jam-packed everything he could in those 21 years. In fact, probably lived more of a life in 21 years than most of us would live in a life of 90 we're talking here more about living with an awareness, an alertness, a preparedness for when Jesus will make his return to bring us home. We can be certain the day will come when Jesus returns to establish the kingdom completely. However, it's not yet, but that doesn't mean he's not with us. Jesus is in our lives in so many ways and all the time. He comes in answered prayers. He comes in peace that passes all understanding. He comes when we forgive unconditionally, just like he does. And of course, in the sharing of love that overflows like his love for us. The hard part is, especially for me with very little patience, is the waiting. I don't know how many of you watch Valley News Live today in the morning, but each morning they have a Facebook question that they put out all the while they're doing their, their, uh, their, uh, their streaming of their service or whatever. And then people put in guesses and at the end they give you the answer of what it was. Well, the last couple weeks there's been a couple of them that really kind of made sense for what was going on. So here's the first one. According to a new PayPal survey, the average American is willing to wait four minutes for this, but not a second longer. What are we willing to wait four minutes for, but not a second longer? Coffee. I don't drink coffee, so to me that just seems silly, but I get it. Here's another one. 76% of us say that we can only do this for one minute. What is it? Wait on hold on the phone. I get that one. We are trying to get a hold of um, an insurance company, my, my parents and I, on Friday. We sat on hold for 50 minutes and I said, that's it. I can't do it anymore and I hung up. We're not a society that likes to wait, obviously. That also means that we can admit that waiting for Jesus' return to, for us is difficult. It's hard for us to understand and even entertain. But let's think of this, it this way instead. Waiting can and should help us to recognize and appreciate the presence of Jesus in our lives all around us each and every single day. Each time we do for others as we would want them to do for us. 
Each time we love and forgive and serve and be present for our neighbor, we are testifying to the presence of Jesus in our own lives. The presence of a risen Christ who gave his life for us and will come to judge the living and the dead. Now true, this kind of waiting, this long time of preparing, this never-ending need for patience is not easy to sustain. We can indeed get tired. We can indeed doubt, and get frustrated in what we see going on around us. We can indeed be distracted and given to the ways of this world rather than waiting for the world that yet is, is yet to come. Let's be honest, you and I can be just as foolish as those bridesmaids on any given day. We too can forget to use our heads, be irresponsible with our work, be absent when we're supposed to be preparing. However, we don't have to allow ourselves to fall into that trap. We're blessed to have a place and a community that keeps us preparing. So take a moment, remember who you are, you're a Christian, and that you are amongst brothers and sisters in Christ who can also be reminded that church is a place where we can find hope, where there is support and help, and where others will be waiting as well. We can find the ending of the book of Revelation. The book that reveals the story of the apocalypse, the end, the end of Revelation says this, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with all of the saints. And remember, we talked about this last week. We're all saints because we are all believers. Amen. At this time, we will listen to a special hymn called, I Will Lift My Eyes. join together with the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of the sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the people of God. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. The petitions will be, end with, hear us, O God, and your response will be, your mercy is great. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt presence. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Sovereign God, gather our country around a shared table this week as we navigate the election results. Open fruitful dialogue between people of every political party and place and age and social economic status so that we may discern the common good that you desire for all of us. 
Help us all to acknowledge and work for both justice and mercy. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Almighty Protector, be with all who will be observing Veterans Day this week. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. And help those that have served know and feel the thankfulness that those of us in this country give to them for their service. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious God, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of those attempting to diffuse conflict. May leaders proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace will prevail. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Healing God, even when we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us deliver us, and fulfill your purpose for us. According to your steadfast love, grant healing and wholeness to those who are mourning as they deal with loss. We ask that you continue to send healing to those dealing with illness and recovery. This morning, we especially lift up those within our congregation and those who have a connection to those within our walls. We lift up Anita and Elena and Jeff and Kirk and Brent and Paxley, and Vern, and Veronica, and Lisa, and all of those that we now name silently in our own hearts. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord, we ask that you be with us now as we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. People of God, hear the blessing. May the God of all creation in whose image we were made, who claims us and calls us as beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign Savior and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Our sending him soon and very soon. Facebook and uh, the, the, um, the, gosh, I'm drawing a blank. Our website, there you go. Our website for updated information is how things are changing. Um, we will continue to be watching the, the numbers and see where we can go from there. If you remember, if you have, didn't get contacted for a Sunday school packet and you want one, get a hold of the church as soon as possible so we can do that. And please, please, Take care of your neighbors right now. It's a scary time in our area with the numbers that they are. And we ask that y'all be safe and stay well. Our dismissal, beloved of God, go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Have a wonderful week.